St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. I'd like us to begin reading at verse 11 through and including verse 17. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. Verse 11 says, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up, began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. I would like to talk a little bit today, and I'm not going to keep you long, but I'd like to talk about, Lord, we want our children back. It is generally assumed that our Lord only raised three persons from the dead. This young man at Nain, the little daughter of Jairus, the ruler, and of course, we all know Lazarus of Bethany. But the theologians say that such an assumption is purely arbitrary. We have before called attention to the vast number of miracles worked by Jesus during the two years and a half of the public ministry that are not reported by the evangelists. If you remember carefully, John said, and many other miracles did Jesus that are not recorded in this book, I'm sure that if they were recorded, the world could not contain. So simply to assume that Jesus only raised three people, again, I will repeat, is purely arbitrary. That is, somebody has decided based on those three incidents that this is all Jesus ever did. But the truth is that he did many, many more miracles that were not recorded. Uh, if I were to borrow from John again, John is very careful to say that whatever I have recorded, I've recorded so that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God and believing you might have life through his name. So he picked very specific things in order to get us to understand who Jesus is. Not only what he does, but who he is. It's important to understand that because he wants to declare himself to the world and to bring us to understand not only what he does, but who he is. It's critical, if I might take that metaphor and apply it to those of us here today, it is not what you have that makes you significant. What makes you significant is who you are. Uh, I feel like shouting on that one, and I, I'm telling you that, who you are. Who you are is significant if you're in a pinto. Who you are doesn't change if you're in a Rolls Royce. If you're homeless, it's who you are. 
and if you're in a mansion it's still who you are because at the end of the day nobody's going to the grave with a hearse pulling a u-haul uh, amen it's just you meeting your god and who you are is critical to him <laughs> It is important then that there are many other miracles that he did. And they were not mentioned, of course, the unreported miracles, several instances of men and women and children raised from the dead. I was reading Augustine and Augustine pointed out that in one of his messages he pointed out and he calls attention to this in his words when he declared very especially of, num of the numerous persons raised to life by Christ, three only are mentioned as specimens in the Gospels, unquote. Each evangelist then specially chooses one of the various examples. Each one chooses something that is peculiar to them and that draw their attention. It's like when you read the scriptures, there are some scriptures that bounce out. Some come at you very strongly. And depending on what's going on in your life, this is why God's word touches every aspect of our lives. And depending on what's going on in your life, a certain scripture comes alive to you in a particular time and situation when you never noticed it before. There are certain things that move us in the scriptures because of what we're going through at a particular time. And many times we have read over and over and over again and it never came to us in a spiritual way because we weren't in a situation that needed that particular word. Uh, that's why the Bible indicates to me that there is a word for every situation. Uh, I'm trying to behave, but I, you know, I told them when I have the mic in my hand and I feel like preaching a little bit. Uh, St. John alone accounts the raising of Lazarus. St. Luke is the solitary reporter of the miracle performed on the dead son of the widow of Nain. We may reasonably infer, says one writer, Dean Pumptree, that this miracle from its circumstance had specially fixed itself in the memories of the devout women. There were certain women then, and this is in Luke chapter 8 and about verse 1, where certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And so Luke brings this because Luke is the writer who deals more with Jesus' relationship to women, to Jesus' relationship to people who are suffering and struggling. Luke, more than any other writer, deals with folk who are having hard times, difficult times, hard ways to go. Luke is the writer who deals with compassion. I gotta understand this, that you cannot just feel compassion, you gotta do something when you feel that pain. God does not give us the feeling in order for us just to have the feeling. God gives us the feeling for us to respond and do something about what we feel. Ah, I feel like shouting here. It's important to understand this, that nothing moves. Some of the greatest people who help other people are people who have had the pain themselves. People who haven't been through anything can't deliver folk who are in something. You have to have been there in order to bring somebody out with the gusto that it takes to defeat the enemy in times like these. Luke spends a lot of time trying to show us, yes, and to deal with the issue of pain. 
so here now he's got Jesus going into a city called Nain from the Hebrew Nain simply means fear what it means now is that it's a striking city it's a beautiful city that's set up on a hill when you understand the situation it's on a steep hill it is on the slope of little Herman and it's near a place called Endor 20 or more miles from Capernaum and the main the place called Nain is a small village and it's still there in Israel right now but the interesting thing about Nain is even though it was beautiful because it was striking uh, on a hillside and you could see it from miles away but the problem with Nain is that on both sides of the road when you're going up to the city on both sides of the road are sepulchers or graves so you're walking upward and you're going to the city but as you go up to the city in all of its splendiferous beauty you still have grave sides on both sides of the road so on your way to a beautiful city you got to go past the graves on both sides isn't it interesting that as beautiful as America is and as wonderful as it is it is still the leading place for murder in any place in the world isn't it interesting that as beautiful as America is with all of the wonder and splendor of its financial capacity it is still the greatest prison holder of any nation in the world uh, I'm going to talk to somebody here I, uh, as pretty as it is uh, as wonderful as it is it is still still incarcerating more people than anywhere in the world isn't this the home of the brave is this the land of the free well give some consideration then to how is it that in all of the splendor and all of your beauty you have people dying more than any other country you have people killing each other what God is saying to us right here is because you're beautiful on the outside doesn't mean you are beautiful on the inside oh God and there's more there's more there's more to life than just frills and floss the life really gets good when somebody can come to your rescue and not your funeral uh, I feel like it is critical now because uh, here is Jesus on the way up and while he is on the way up the man who is dead is on the way down so here is Jesus with his uh, posse his group is with him and there's absolutely no way for you to be in a posse with Jesus and there not be a lot of joy and a lot of grace and power being spread around if I were going to be in any group I'd want to be in the group with Jesus if I want to be in any group I want to be with the Lord because when the Lord is in the house and when I'm in the company of the Lord then power is exhibited on all sides you can't be in the company of the Lord and not have joy because I heard the Bible say the joy of the Lord is my strength so as they're coming up on the mountainside then the funeral mourning procession is coming down and there's a crowd on both sides and the question I want to ask you is whose crowd are you in are you in the crowd going down looking for another tomb are are you in the crowd going up uh, 
with deliverance and anointing in your space. Uh, I feel like preaching in here now. One of the things that I wish we could ever get to is where the power of the Lord would rub off on us. Not just the power to shout and have a good time in the house of God, but power to get our hands dirty. Uh, can I preach like I feel it? Can I, can I preach like a Patrick? I'm almost there. I want you to notice now the evangelist who specially delights in regarding the gracious relations of our Lord with women. And he is also the evangelist who delights in telling us of unasked miracles which Christ perform. In much of the Gospels, you will notice that any time he performed a miracle, somebody asked him. The lepers came to him. The woman with the issue of blood came to him. The Syrophoenician woman came to him. Jairus came to him. Oh yes, the centurion came to him. Notice all of those miracles were requested. Uh, but this is a miracle that was not requested. Uh, I don't want to get too heavy into the theological aspect of it. But he is the evangelist who declares that here is a time when Jesus was not even asked. I wonder is there somebody in here and somebody under the sound of my voice who is going through so much that you don't even have to ask the Lord to step in. Oh, he's coming in without a request. He's not even asking you how much faith you have. He's just looking at your situation and decided I'm going to bring you out. I wonder is there somebody in the house who is hurting so bad that you can't even open your mouth to ask God for a miracle. But he just told me to tell you he's on the way up while you're on the way down and he's getting ready to get his hands dirty. Uh, I feel like preaching in here. Look at your neighbor and say it's time to get our hands dirty. Uh, the interesting thing here is that the miracle was not wrought with any intention of Jesus establishing his claims because many times he would do miracles in order to fulfill the scriptures to move his credibility forward many times he would do miracles in order to show who he was I am the son of the living God but now it's interesting here that it's a miracle that seems to have no purpose from a theological point of view. The only reason he is doing this is because he wants to comfort a desolate woman whose hope and love and defense was lying stretched out on her boy's buyer. The only future she would ever have was now laying dead. I feel like shouting here. The only power she would ever have was laying dead on that buyer. Now I feel like shouting Jesus is coming up and they are coming down the boy is laying out on the buyer and she notice now is the only son of a widow which means she has no husband and now her future is 
terminated because she can't get a job unless it's a harlot. It's either you're in your mother's house, your father's house, or your children are taking care of you. But now the boy is dead. Can I take you back to the Old Testament real quick? Do you remember the two women, the two harlots? And the baby was between them two boys. And if you remember carefully, that one rolled over on her child and the child died. And they began to fight as to whose child it is. And then they brought it to Solomon to determine who the mother was. I want you to notice why would a harlot want to have a child? Because as a harlot gets older, she loses her attraction and folk would rather a young harlot to an old one. I feel like preaching in here. But the boy was her retirement. Do you feel me here? The boy was her latter day help. When she couldn't trick, she had a son to take care of her. I wonder how many mothers are going to be in trouble in their later life because their sons are laying dead in the beautiful streets of the United States of America. I feel like preaching here. And that's why Jesus is in all of us. And it's time to get our hands dirty. When I say get your hands dirty, you got to understand what I mean. As he's coming up the hill and he sees the boy laying on the buyer, the first thing he does is he touches the buyer. Uh, what is the buyer? It's a cooling board. He's all wrapped up and it's a way to take him to the grave. If he touches, everybody stands back. Because according to the scriptures, if you touch anything that the dead is on, you are contaminated yourself. Can I talk to the children of God? Ain't no time to stand back and not get your hands dirty because of what other people think and how other people think you ought to behave. It's not time now simply to want to shout in the house of God and not touch the buyer. It's time to touch something in order to get somebody out of the situation they're in. Can I have a little church Patrick I feel like lifting him up look at your neighbor and say neighbor when last have you had your hands dirty calling on the name of the Lord for somebody else when last have you got your hands dirty pushing your plate back fasting for the condition in our country when last have you rolled out of bed not to go to the refrigerator but to get on your knees and call out to God to bless your neighbor when last have you sacrificed a few dollars for a no dress and took it to help somebody else when last have you got in the mix and served somebody homeless or helped somebody to make it another day it's time to get our hands dirty it's time to get down in the trenches and holler he's able he's able 
to bring you out. I need some praying folk. I feel like preaching. When last have you called somebody on the phone and said the Lord will bring you out? When last have you reached for one of your drunken relatives? You know the one in the family nobody want to deal with, but you're sanctified. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. And if nobody will touch them, you ought to touch them. If nobody will deal with them, you ought to deal with him. So what? He's on drugs. So what? He's a dopehead. So what? He's a pusher. So what? He's a gang member. Somebody. Somebody ought to reach for him ought to reach for her I feel like preaching you ought to go on the street on the corner that she's tricking and say gal get up from here there's life I feel the Holy Ghost it was compassion he wasn't trying to prove anything but his heart went out for her he was broken in his spirit I wish I had a few saints that were broken in their spirit when they see the devil operating I wish there was somebody who would say I care here am I send me Give us our children back. Give us our boys back. Give us our girls back. I don't want to be a father without children. You don't want to be a mother without children. Lord. 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 Give us. Give us. Give us. Give us. Lord, Lord, give us. I want him back. I want him back. We are fourteen percent of the country, but we are fifty percent of the homicide. Lord. Give them back, Lord, give them back. We are two times the amount in prison. We are double every other group. Lord, let them out. Lord, keep them out. say Lord I want him back Sit down if you can. It's painful. 
it's painful to see a whole group of people who seem to be in a land of plenty yet suffering all the time and somebody said asked the question what's wrong with us and the psychologist said that you're asking the wrong question the question is what has happened to us and that leads to another question who did it to us and that leads to another question how do we get out of it And I'll tell you how to get out of it. His name is Jesus. 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 How will he operate? He operates with those who are coming up the hill with him. Those of us who have gathered in this house all we got to do is get our hands dirty touch what nobody else will touch go where nobody else will go because that's what Jesus is and Jesus people are people who don't sit around judging everybody they go around delivering anybody who will listen to them ah! and if you hear the sound of my voice wherever you are on this mother's day the Lord is calling you on this mother's day And I hope that these words will give you the opportunity to give your mother the greatest comfort. The greatest comfort she will ever have if you will turn from those ways that put your life in jeopardy. Don't only think of yourself don't only think of the pleasures you want but give thought that a wonderful child makes mother's heart glad give thought that your success makes her glad give thought that I know she'll hang with you no matter what you do but take the burden off her shoulders and come to Jesus come to Jesus he'll make you a better son he'll make you a better father a better husband a better mother come on and if you're near a phone and you're not assembled with us pick up that phone and call the number that's on the screen 844-267-6666 7729-844-267-7729 Make your mothers happy this day because you've walked away from the things that'll break her heart and come and bring her bring her the best gift she could ever have and that's you changed you off drugs you not pushing anymore you not wheeling that gun in the street come on Come on, come on, come on. Come on, he's calling. I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus. Come to him right now. Lord, we want him back. We want him back. We want him back. And we're going to go get him because we want him back. Come on, come on.